<laughs> I am Benji, the Black Dread. I gotta tell you, the Black Dread, your grace, is under weather right now. Call myself being adventurous, flew my dragon over to Noth, and I guess I didn't get out quick enough. I think I came down with butterfly fever. My maester's been giving me this, I guess. This is what you take for butterfly fever. Whatever. So anyway, we are here. Seven blessings to you all. I'm the Black Dread again, the last Targaryen. So again, being under the weather, I don't really want to get into the subject I was planning on talking about. So I just want to come to you because we have some House of the Dragon updates. Yes, there's been lots of action in the world of House of the Dragon. Um, got three big things I want to talk to you about. First things first, let's talk about... The first images that have been released officially from HBO show the entire cast at their first table read. Yay. Now, why is that exciting? Why is that important? Well, let's talk about it. If you remember that the Game of Thrones series from HBO, and you remember when I talk about Game of Thrones, I mean the HBO show, Song of Ice and Fire. I mean this beautiful thing right here. So the Game of Thrones from HBO was adapted from A Song of Ice and Fire, which is a story written with narrative, with dialogue. So it's like we're inside of Caitlyn's head, we're inside of Jamie's head, etc. We can hear the dialogue. We're in the room with everyone. Whereas House of the Dragon is based off of the Fire and Blood series here. And this is not your traditional story where it has characters just talking back and forth to one another. This is a collection of you know, papers from maesters, septons. We don't really know where a lot of this information has come from, but it's a lot of hearsay. We have Mushroom who's running around with these outlandish stories about what's happening. This is uh, the Targaryen history beginning from Aegon the Conqueror up until Aegon the th Third. And a big part of this is the Dance of the Dragons. So that's what the TV show Dance of, uh, House of the Dragon is going to be based off of Fire and Blood. So we have them at a table read showing that they're actually reading a script. So that means that they have adapted this into a script. That's important because a lot of the scenes, like if you, um, well, one of the um, images that has come out is of Matt Smith dressed as Daemon Targaryen. He's got the silver wig on and it looks like him and Rhaenyra are, you know, on the beach and it looks like they may be plotting or talking or whatever. And this is good because we don't really know what happened between them in like in their private meetings. We don't know. We just have Mushroom saying what he said. And we have a Septon who may contradict, you know, Mushroom. And then we have another Maester who came along and contradict both of them. You know, we just have a general idea of what happened. So this is good. So now we'll be able to finally piece together what really happened. Like, was there a plot to murder their Valerian spouses, you know, Damon and Rhaenyra were both married to Valerian twin spouses and they both die and then they get married to each other right away. So it's like, hmm, that seems a little suspicious and that was a little convenient. So were they plotting, a, you know, murder? We don't know. Some people say yes, some people say no. Maybe we'll get to find out. So we see them all at a table read. This is very exciting. We see um, that they have hired someone to play Otto Hightower which is good. And that also brings me into the second thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, the news about House of the Dragon is where, where are we going to begin the story? Are we going to begin, you know, they haven't cast anyone for Jaehaerys. We have Viserys, one, who is going to be the king at the time when everything jumps off. So, you know, I think, you know, based on what we see, we have the actor, the actress who's playing Rhaenyra is not a young girl. So we're thinking, okay, we don't have um, a male air cast yet. So I'm thinking this is going to be probably around the time when Daemon Targaryen has come home from his his uh, frolics and his adventures in these, you know, the Stepstones in the Free Cities. He's over there, you know, doing things with his dragon. So I think this is going to be about the time when Viserys He's already married to Alicent Hightower, I believe, at this point. Now, this is just the Black Dread speculation. This could be, you know, it could be different. But for, based on what I'm seeing right now, I'm thinking this is going to be around the time when he's already married to Alicent Hightower. And the big plot is, like, we have to set off, you know, where everyone is. We have to set the story off. So I think what everyone's going to be talking about is we don't have a male heir yet. 
because the big thing is, you know, Viserys does not have a male heir. And we just had this big thing with the prior king, Jaehaerys. They had this big council. Um, everyone had to decide who's going to be the male heir. All his heirs kept dying. And we don't know the line of succession is in question right now. We don't know who's going to be the next heir. So they figured it out. It has to be a male heir. They, you know, they bypassed the natural, the first son's daughter to go for the, the second son's son. So it's like, it has to be a male. So we have this established. So what I think they're going to begin is saying that, okay, Viserys, you're married to Alicent. You only have your daughter in You keep naming her the heir, but we don't have a son. This is where we start. And then Damon comes in. And I think this is where they start, you know, hey, you know, their niece and nephew, it's, you know, we Targaryens, we do what we do, but, you know, don't judge us, <laughs> you know. But, you know, so I think this is at the point where they start saying, okay, how are we going to get on the Iron Throne? You know, no bullshit aside, let's, how are we going to do this? So this could be where they start setting the pieces of the puzzle up. We don't have anyone cast yet for the person who's going to play Aegon the Second. Aegon the Elder, and then we have Aegon the Third. Aegon. It's going to get confusing. There's going to be a lot of Rainies and Rainers and Aegons and Amons and Amons, and, you know. So it's going to be confusing. But you know, the Black Church is here. I'll walk you through it. <laughs> so yeah. So we have an idea of where we're going to start. We have some sort of a script. And the last thing I wanted to really just you know touch on is the Valerian. The Valerians are going to be coming to life. We have scenes of what is most likely going to be Driftmark because they have the seahorse engraved into the stones. We see the island, the little villages, and, you know, so I'm like, based on these images, this is definitely Driftmark. And again, if we go back to the scenes of the table read, we see my man, Steve Toussaint, who is the sea snake. And again, with the sea snake, they're adapting the story of the nine voyages of the sea snake. So that's going to be incredible to watch. He becomes, you know, one of the richest men in the kingdoms by going all the way out to Yi Ti, and he's all in a shy, and he might have even gone to Valeria for all we know. You know, we never know. So um, we see Steve Toussaint there, so and we see the images of Driftmark. So they are really going to be able to bring this out. And again, you know, with all the controversy about, you know, how they cast him. Again, when you're going through the story, so much vagueness about Corliss Valerian, and especially his sons and his son's mother and you know Rainera and her children no one looks like what they're supposed to look like and it's all weird but they don't say what really and there's no images there's no description I've read the story several times I've looked for plot holes I'll look for anything there's it's really set up to be how you know George R. R. Martin is presenting it to us and, and, and again he is executive producer on House of the Dragon so this is his vision this is how he is presenting it to us from the way the Maesters presented it to him. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It looks like they're going to stay true to the story. We have, you know, again, you know, you see Matt Smith as, you know, Doctor Who. And it doesn't look like it. But then when you see this image of him now with the silver hair. And he looks like one of my relatives. And I'm just like, yeah, this is going to be good. So, yeah. So that's so far they're filming. It's happening. House of the Dragon is happening. Now, whether or not Winds of Winter is happening, that's another story. Again, we have been getting more and more evidence that <clears throat> Mr. George R. R. Martin is uh, kind of distracted. You know, like it seems like this is, might be <laughs> where we're going to be for a while. Um, but, you know, again, th that's fine. Let's just see what happens with House of the Dragon. Perhaps, you know, he dropped a little clue. They put out a little message saying winter is coming. So, and he's leaving his cabin. He's up at this cabin where he goes away to write his books. And he's like, I'm going to be leaving the cabin soon and winter is coming. Ooh. So, you know, maybe we'll get the winds of winter. We never know. So anyway, yeah. Um, again, like again, so, you know, we'll, we'll come back to the house of the dragon as we get more information. And again, once I'm over this, you know, little bit of butterfly fever, I'll come to you with the little story that I wanted to talk to you about. One of my favorite kings, one of my favorite relatives, Mager. <laughs> Not necessarily cruel. Cruel? I don't know. We'll decide. But anyway, I just wanted to leave you with the words of House Targaryen Fire.